Today I'm making a classic white marble using simple hand tools and stone coat epoxy. Anyone can do this to update the countertops, floors, and tabletops in your space right over your old surfaces. Okay, my edges should be fully coated. You have tons of time to get this project to look the way you want it. Look what that did. Ooh, that is pretty. Look how that vein wraps that edge, that is sweet. I'm gonna show you how to turn wood into high-end marble, saving you well over a thousand bucks, replacing your countertops with stone coat epoxy. I accidentally added too much black to this section. You're gonna have to let me know how this project turns out. Stay tuned, folks. You're gonna enjoy this video. Hey folks, I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Countertops. Today's recipe is a white marble, a Carrera marble using simple hand tools. I'm gonna chop in some black Rust-Oleum spray paint into white tinted epoxy for a real elegant, subtle marble look that many people love. Because my project is white today, I'm gonna use Stone Coat's Art Coat. It has ultra UV resistance. Today's project is over a three quarter inch thick piece of wood. Normally I'd install a drop edge if I was gonna use this in a customer's home. But this is gonna be a white marble sample piece that I can take to my home shows. I've applied two coats of our epoxy undercoat in white to prep this project. And before I mix and pour epoxy, you want to sand with 220 grit sandpaper. Just a hand sanding is all that is necessary. Wipe the dust with some paper towels and we're ready to mix. Step one, we're going to mix up Stone Coat's Art Coat. Art Coat is a one to one ratio of epoxy and you want to pour in part B first. Art Coat Epoxy is a DIY friendly, no nasty smell epoxy that you can use directly in your home. You could use this in a small bathroom if you wanted. I'm gonna mix this epoxy with a paddle mixer and a drill. That's the optimal way to mix. If you don't have that, it's okay. Use a paint stick and you're gonna wanna just extend that mixing time, taking time to scrape the sides and bottom of the bucket. But for a fast mix, grab the bucket and mix with a paddle mixer. Keep that mixing head off the bottom and sides of the bucket while going full speed. Folks, stick to the end of this video. I do a vein using a paint stick and I need your feedback. Do you think it helps or hurts this project? We'll see you there, it's coming right up. All right, I've mixed for about one minute. Now I'm gonna tint this whole batch of epoxy opaque white. That's easily done with our liquid epoxy dyes. A little bit goes a long way. All you need is a few drops. Just a few drops. I think that'll do it. Nice. Okay. I'm going to pour my mixed epoxy in the center of my project in a ribbon. And then I'll take my notch trowel and incorporate that epoxy amongst itself to mix that epoxy another time. Pouring it out in a ribbon keeps it from running off those edges prematurely. Take your 1 8 inch by 1 8 notch trowel and mix that epoxy another time here on the surface of the project. When using Art Coat Epoxy, you don't have to be in a rush. There's a long open working time, meaning you have plenty of time for this epoxy to self-level. You have plenty of time to add in that color. Once you've troweled the epoxy over itself, you can now start to spread it out over the project surface. Keep the epoxy away from the edges at first get a nice even coating on the surface before taking it over the edges. Use that leading edge of the notch trowel to evenly spread the epoxy over the edges. Okay, my edges should be fully coated. Just take any excess epoxy and spread it evenly over the field of the project. Use your gloved hand to break up any dry spots and help the epoxy flow over the edges. It really is simple. It's a nice even coating along that front edge. I like that. 
All right, our white epoxy is spread evenly using that notch trowel. Next step, I'm gonna incorporate some black gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint with a paintbrush to marbleize this project. A little bit of color goes a long way. I'll start in one section, feather my color out to create some marbleization and grain flow as I work my way across this piece. Before chopping in color, de-shed your brush. Pull on these bristles, make sure there's none loose that want to fall out into your project. If there are, just tug on them slightly, they'll come right out. The next step, you want to pre-wet that brush by dipping it into some of that mixed epoxy. All right, my, my brush has some epoxy on it. I'm gonna take that black gloss spray paint, spray a little bit here to create my palette, dip my brush in. You can see I have a little color on there and now just chop this color into your project. Use the heel of that brush. Oh man, that's dark. I hope it turns out. It will, I promise. You just, you feather out that color. So if that's too dark, you grab some white, bring that back on top, it'll gray it out. You can also see I'm not chopping every section. The little dark sections, I'll grab it and bring it over to the lighter section. You grab some color here, feather it out. You don't want to leave any spots that are too white and you don't want to leave spots that are too chopped. So just feather that. You have tons of time to get this project to look the way you want it. I'm focusing on using the heel of this brush. That gives me the most realistic pattern. I'll come smooth and feather all this together with a blowtorch or a heat gun. All right, I'm gonna add a little more color. So I'll come back to my black. I love how subtle it is. It's really beautiful. I think I'll come torch this maybe use a heat gun to feather it out and then drag a vein through here. I'm gonna remove those air bubbles incorporated into the epoxy while chopping and mixing with some heat. I like to use a propane torch, but you can also use a heat gun or a blow dryer. To remove those air bubbles, hold the torch head an inch or two from the surface in a sweeping motion, keep that head moving and you'll quickly remove that air incorporated into that epoxy. I'm gonna use my heat gun. I'm gonna turn it on high, and I'm gonna use that to soften some of these sharp lines left behind by the chop brush. So just come in, keep that torch head moving, and you can see it start to feather and move that epoxy. Keep your heat gun head moving and come in close to the epoxy using the air to push and move the colors around. It won't take long for you to get this piece to look just the way you'd like. Check out this section. This is like painting with air. It's kind of soothing. It's awesome. There's no noxious smell doing this. And that heat gun really melds and blends these colors together. It's almost not fair it's so easy. I really like how some sections are a little more contrasting than others. Looking pretty good. All right, this project is complete just the way it is, but I'm gonna take it up another level. You can grab a paint stick and then I'm gonna use just black and white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I'm gonna spray the tip of my paint stick and drag right through that wet epoxy where I want to see a contrasting vein. I kind of have one going this direction already, just the way I chopped in that color. So I'm going to continue along that pathway. Spray the tip of that paint stick and then just use the corner and drag that right through the project. Changing the angle of the paint stick as you add in color will affect how much paint is applied. Doing this will add a realistic effect when it's time to torch out your vein and bring it to life. Grab a little white Rust-Oleum gloss spray paint. I'm layering these two spray paint colors on top of one another, and then I'll come back and meld and mix them together using a heat source. Yeah, I'm gonna add some silver metallic to this vein. I think it'll look really good. I'm 
I'm gonna use a propane torch to meld this together. You can see it doesn't take much to get those colors to move and meld and look more realistic. How cool. Look what that did. Ooh, that is pretty. I think it helped that project. That looks cool. Guys, let me know in the comments below. Question of the day, I want your feedback. Did you like it before or after I applied this vein? A, I love the vein, or B, I liked it before the vein. Let me know in the comments below. All right, that's looking sweet. Your worn countertops are waiting for you to make them look like this. You can renew your space in a weekend with Stone Coat Epoxy. Check out our website at Stone Coat Countertops to see all the amazing products used in this video. You get to pick what's next, a glass light clear coat with Stone Coat Epoxy or learn how to apply the ultimate top coat. Your choice, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, you got this, and we'll see you on the next video. 